welcome to a terrifying episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. And that is because, you know, we record the show on Zoom every week, but never have we had people who have taken Zoom to the level of terror that Elizabeth Piper and the cast of The Dark Offerings have done. And they are with us today. Before we get to them, though, Becky's going to kick us off with a little story of her own Zoom madness, because I don't think we've told a story about mom in a few weeks. And Yeah, it's been a people, few weeks. I, I have a good one. People okay. come for the guests, but they stay for they the, stay for the mom, mom stories. Uh, so mom and I were invited to be on a panel this week on a Zoom panel uh, about, you know, it's like a mother daughter camp thing, you know, how camp t- turned us into the people we are today sort of thing. And for this panel, there's a press Why would session. anyone call us about a Jewish summer camp? Why would anyone call us about like a Jewish summer camp experience with our parents? Um, it's our so, jam. So, uh, so there's a prep call for it. We're on this prep call and it's like a pre-interview. All the panelists are doing this pre-discussion. And keep in mind, mom is doing this call from the auto train. So taking a cha- train from Florida to Virginia. She's on a train. With her car. With her car. I don't, but anyways, that's like other stories. There's, anyways, this is there's a other Jewish stories. Cuban mom, just to sketch it out for our amazing guests. Who was very excited that she was going to get strapped into the top bunk <laughs> to of be, her little car. To be trained that's, overnight. To be trained overnight. Now, surprising to no one, the auto train does not have good <laughs> Zoom Wi-Fi. reception, <laughs> Wi-Fi or Zoom reception. So we are... She's trying to participate in this call of her video's not working. We're trying to tell her to use the chat, but she's just texting me. And then I have to read out her text to everyone. And anyway, so we're basically, it's as if mom's not there, but she's listening in on the call and I'm giving a response. And then you kind of just hear in the background in mom's voice, because she didn't realize she wasn't on mute and we could hear her just going, oh, Roger, isn't our daughter so brilliant? She's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> which I have to say, while both a little bit awkward and embarrassing to have someone say that about you in front of a, a room full of people, I also am like, mom, can you join me on every work call I do from now on? And just quietly in the back, whisper to everyone how smart I am, because it did feel great. So mom's little Zoom faux pod turned into like the little cheerleading section I realized I want to have with me all the time. So so I would say the opposite of mom cheering you on on Zoom by accident would be a demon transmitting (laughs) through Zoom and killing people one by one against their will. Elizabeth Piper, you you wrote the film um, and you star in it as Sophia Hapgood, uh, along with Benjamin Frankenberg, who plays your brother, James. We've got uh, we've got Tina Nikolova, who plays Molly, who is actually my favorite character because Aww. you drop all the truth bombs. I love that you come in and just <laughs> drop all those Zoom truth bombs on your high school. <laughs> and then a, a true legend of the film industry, um, uh, Terry Alexander, uh, who many folks know from Day of the Dead. Um, uh, such a pleasure to have you as well uh, here on the on, on the show with us. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Elizabeth, there's a million people sitting on Zoom for the last two years. There are a million potential takes on Zoom as a chamber of horrors. What led you to this? How did you feel like you got the recipe so well to make something so truly terrifying? So, um, wow, that, that, this, this is kind of a long story, but I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I mean, Zoom already is kind of scary because it's very voyeuristic. Um, you're you're looking into somebody's world. It's almost like a rear window. You can see what's happening, but you can't really interact too much if something's happening on somebody's, you know, Zoom picture. Uh, so it's very, it's very isolating. But at the same time, you know, it, it brings us all together. So it's it's already in itself very terrifying. <laughs> Um, and this happened during the, the pandemic, we, we decided to make this. So this was really the only way that we could all communicate. Um, so we used what was, uh, available to communicate with, to make a movie. Uh, so basically in, uh, April of 2020, uh, we 
Marcus and I came up with the idea to make this. Uh, we bullet pointed it all out. We wrote the script together and then we got all of our favorite people to be a part of it. And thankfully they were all available. So, so yeah. So you all knew each other already? Most of us. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, Terry's nodding. Terry, were, were you new to the Zoom group? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I met these wonderful actors through Liz. Um, they're all very, very talented. Uh, you hang out with a cool group, Liz. Um, this is a story about how we have created a life form, electromagnetic life form, and how it gives life to these positive and negative creatures. And this one is a very negative creature. And he attacked uh, these vulnerable people who are brought all their pain to the computer. And it just kept their illustrates what happens when a negative entity gets into their pain. It's really a cool script. <laughs> I that agree. Is, it is that, very a, cool. That is as poetic a description as as I could have heard of. That is that is really yeah, beautiful. very beautifully put, and oh, it wow. shows there is a lot of uh, can find a lot of depth and meaning in horror stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got your good That's entities bad. and your bad entities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. The I mean, I think the best ones always reflect something that people are are really really afraid of. Okay. One of the things that is uh, Terry touched on just now is some of these people are 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 pretty terrible. Um, the, Emily is wait Emily is the actor or the character? The, everyone feels like they're the real person. So em Emily is uh, played by Lydia. Tina is oh. Molly. Oh, okay. <laughs> my my other favorite, just because the reveal of like the awful thing she's doing is so cool. Um, but. Um, but some characters, I feel like, you know, you're, you're, people are rooting for, or maybe you're rooting for differently. So, so let's just go around the horn, starting with Benjamin, because, uh, because you're, you're the first to get us involved in this problem in the, in the film. When you're reading the script for the first time, who do you think, like, who are you rooting for? Who, who do you think is going to survive the longest when you're reading that script? Uh, without we don't have to, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but that is something that becomes apparent that someone's going to make it to the end. Who are you rooting for as a as a reader? I mean, it's it's tough because you like you look at that and uh, you know without giving anything away, I, you know you follow you know you're going to follow your protagonist. So you're like trying to figure out who's in alignment with that protagonist. And um, I think like we come in. I don't think it's you know the the introduction to the film shows a lot of. Uh, uh, complex relationships and uh, split second decision making. And I think it reflects how important relationships and how complex they can be um, throughout the rest of the film. Um, this idea that like people you like might have to be sacrificed, people you don't like might have to live the reasoning for keeping somebody or losing somebody is, is a complex decision. And so the entire film, I think like playing with that idea of who the hell gets to stay and who the hell has to go. I mean, we align ourselves with Sophie's vision throughout the film and what, what she has to experience and who she has to connect with. And I mean, from the beginning, her brother is the person who puts this on her. So like, <laughs> no matter how close you are, are you really safe? I, I don't know. Uh, I just, you, you kind of try to see where she's going with it. Yeah, Lil and Beck. How, you know what? Yeah. I really, I really did think about who I, if I, who I would call. And if it would be the type of thing where I'd call one of my siblings. I hope you're revealing I, that list now. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I thought about the list. But I was like, <laughs> would I call one of my siblings? Because I know they would do whatever it takes to save me. And save then I could you. trust that they would actually save right. me. You're not hoping that the or demon will kill your sibling. I, right. You're I'm hoping, hoping they'll figure it out. It. Or uh, do I want to, or do I want to keep them out of it to keep them safe? And that's like a really interesting, I think that's a, a very realistic calculation in terms of saving yourself versus saving others. And when you're in that situation, what links you'll go to to really save yourself. And that idea of, you know, 
who who you would pull in. And anyways, I I was very uh very uh, affected uh, by that. Also, I just want everyone to know Becky is the person in my will that is my plug puller because I know that <laughs> Lily would just keep my like reanimated body and formaldehyde. I would find a way to convince the demon so that that we all still hang out and we can I'll give my soul it's fine but that like we can all remain friends and that this could just keep going forever in this little group. But under no circumstances are we not going to be hanging out. So <laughs> I would have a so very case, hard time. So you would pull me and Cheyenne being like, worst case oh, scenario, and just, we all end up demons. Like the exactly. worst case scenario is we get to still hang we're out. Just demons we're demons together. together. And yeah, there is. Fine. Absolutely. Okay, Molly. <laughs> oh, sorry, Tina, you played Molly, who yes. I feel like is an unfortunate victim here. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, and uh, you, you, you drop you have this moment where your character just drops, like I said, all the truth bombs on everyone. Uh, and uh, I, I, I love when you gear up to do that scene, do you, are you pulling from like moments in your life where, Oh, there's some truth bombs. I wish I dropped some, some people, or is that, are you oh, yeah. <laughs> going into just another place? Okay. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely pulling from that. I mean, um, also I was listening to a lot of my chemical romance to to get in the in the mood right before we're shooting the the scenes. What was really cool actually about doing this on Zoom is that I could be, you know, camera off, mic off, and no one has any idea what I'm doing. Like I could prepare however I want it. That's for cool. Going into any take. You can't do that on set. You can't play music loud. You can't do anything because people look at you like what is wrong with you? But um, at home, you can do whatever you want. And then like, boom, you know, I turn on the camera, the mic, and there I am. Um, but yeah, for sure. It, <laughs> when when I first read the script, I kept like bothering uh, Liz and Marcus with like, wait, but, you know, I was like, oh, everyone hates her. I was like, why is she even in the group? And then of course, you know, realizing like, wait, so they wrote the characters thinking of us already? Like, is that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it makes you think. It, it makes you wonder. <laughs> okay, so they knew you had the talent to play her. No, That's they knew you could was. keep it real. You know, you yeah. need someone who's gonna who's gonna keep it real. Uh, I'm analyzing my relationship all of a sudden. <laughs> um, so all, all of you who are victims here um, uh, have to have to do some incredible physical acting entirely on your own and i saw more than one in my view nod to the evil dead and sam raimi's work uh, particularly with the physical reactions to the demons i felt like everyone here channeled a little bit of bruce campbell at his best which i thought was just fantastic um uh i'll, I'll kick it back to elizabeth how did how are are, are you as a filmmaker and the director as filmmakers coaching that and then as the actors what are you channeling to do that physical acting with nobody around you so being a, a horror fan <laughs> of course we like to try and grab some elements from other films that we really appreciate uh to throw in there uh evil dead 2 was definitely one of them uh the other uh one of my personal favorites is fright night um, uh. There was a slight nod in, in that direction as well. Um, but just kind of implementing all of that. And then uh, I, I only designed the effects in terms of how we were going to do them. The actors had to actually uh, do them <laughs> a lot of times. So, you know, when there's like a, something flying across the room, that's them doing it. Um, and we just figured out a way like old school style of filming to make that happen. Um, or, you know, we would get on a call and I'd be like, okay, put the blood here. Okay. Yeah. Let it go <laughs> down. Okay, cool. Yeah. That looks good. <laughs> Be Benjamin, Tina, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on having to do that physical acting? Well, Tina uh, has cool stuff going on over there, right? 
It was it was fun. I mean, I, I had a helper in in my apartment, so uh, <laughs> you know he was able to you know drag me across the floor and and all of that fun stuff. Mm. Um, but there was all like no more blood, more blood. You know <laughs> we need to see more blood. <laughs> and, um, you know you have to like spray blood around and then you have to clean it up so we can do it again and then okay clean more of it. And then oh do my it. gosh, you're the cleanup <laughs> crew too, right? I didn't really consider that your hair makeup. Just Everything. stunt coordinator and the right. cleanup crew and, and we we weren't cutting a lot so we were shooting scenes like straight through so it'd be like okay I'm walking over there I'm saying my line okay I'm gonna go over there then I'm gonna pull the mug so it flies You're and then blocking and then I'm gonna walk over there I'm gonna make this thing shake so that this stuff falls off but not too much so that not everything falls off you know <laughs> trying to figure out like how much stuff moves you know taking pictures also everyone paying attention to their own continuity is like oh is this how far did this move where do I put it back I had to pay attention to a lot of stuff you know Pro- this more- is great I want to just say this is great to mention and to go into such detail Tina because watching the film is viewer you think oh this is genius it's so simple shooting a movie on zoom look at how contained it is and then actually as you're describing it, i'm going oh my god that is so right, for con- so complicated so it's complicated and there's so much to think about and do we had so, uh, somebody helping with the lighting too every single zoom call um david green would come on and just be like okay i think the lighting was right like this okay great you look great that, you know that's a, he that's walked amazing through us and we'd have to move the lights and everything and a lot yeah. more technical than than it's people realize of love and a lot of work <laughs> uh, i, I want to come back to terry for a moment terry before i ask my question i want to make sure your sound is okay i have two terry's so i'm gonna remove one of them and see what happens but well, one is for the demon right so i'm about to say <laughs> Hey, well, I'm lost. There was no such communication when I was a young struggling actor like this. <laughs> I would so, imagine. I think you're doing Jeez. a brilliant job, Terry. I mean, uh, oh, there we go. All right, Terry, there we go. Uh-oh. It says you removed no, me from the meeting. No, but no, you're, no, you're, you're still you're, here. You're still, you're still here. here, and we can still it's see It's just you. like in the movie. It's just like in the movie. We can't. The Zoom will never end. <laughs> um, so, so, Terry, you... You've worked on, you know, with an with icons of the special effects industry, um, uh, particularly Tom Savini. Correct? When in, in yes. Day of the Dead, I mean, you're talking about people that define this industry. Um, what's your reflection on working on a on a film and with filmmakers who are going back to practical effects, who are going away from the the computer generated and and literally it's you can feel and touch it and doing everything themselves well uh in day of the dead i i escaped and and i lived through the movie so i didn't have any real contact of bleeding or <laughs> killing or blood running. that is true you <laughs> and then I worked a, a script with Liz and Marcus called The Last Call. And then I had a little bit of experience that Liz really set me up with the knives in the hand and all the suffering. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed it. Uh, she's a very physical, just like Tom Savini and, and the crew. I I can say that it the special effects in this, should I say rival? Uh, <laughs> rival, what? Tom and the rest of these wonderful creature, I, creatures I had to work with. It's a, it evolves on you brilliantly. I play a sort of expositional character and I introduce some metaphysical ideas to get you relaxed into accepting demons and the whole approach to it. So I kind of escape the, the blood and gore of this particular artistic venture. Actually. That, that, that survive, you survive again. Yes. 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 I do. <laughs> uh, uh, that that that's um that's that's such it's so uh wonderful to hear the the reflection as as someone who has seen so much on working with 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 the younger crew. Did did the did the younger actors did they ever come to you for wisdom or is there wisdom you want to impart onto the other generation while we have you on Zoom? 
Well, the only time we, we got together is at the rap party at the <laughs> end of the movie. And it was during the pandemic, and we all came out to Washington Square Park, and they were marching. Black Lives Matter was going on. These wonderful people were marching. And it went all over the world, this, this wonderful message. So, uh, no, they didn't have time to ask me for any knowledge. They just had to be here now and they all were present and wonderful in their work. And I, I guess that's what Tina talks about. You're just at home, and this is a whole new experience for everybody. So everybody really got into it. it was so cool. Oh, that's that is that is such a that is such a treat. And I, I guess the presence. I think one of the hardest things as that Zoom causes for you. It makes you almost not be present because you're so there and you're looking all around and all of that. And so I think that's such an insightful an insightful piece here. Um, uh, so I want to ask Elizabeth, uh, so there's, there are nods. You mentioned nod to Fright Night. You mentioned nod to Evil Dead. I love little Easter eggs. Uh, Connor McLeod, is that a Highlander? Is that a Highlander? That's named one of the characters, one of the key characters. Well, is Connor that a... McLeod is Highlander, so yeah, okay. I don't want to give anything away, but okay, I see. I, but okay, I see what you mean. So there's a there's there there is there aside from the fact that you like Highlander, there's are there any other signals in any of the names or or uh... all of the the names? Um, I'm I'm weird with my character names. I like to come up with. <laughs> I look at the meanings behind all names and I Ooh, pick certain nice. names for certain reasons. Um, I like that a lot. I think that's they're, they're kind of like little Easter eggs that it's like, I wonder if anybody will pick up on this. <laughs> so, you know, when something happens to somebody, maybe that mean or that name meaning gives them a little bit of a hint in that direction. Oh. Um, Nice. I'm not saying that's always the case with every single name. You know, I'll I'll pick little elements not to give anything too away. But okay. yeah, all right. All right. I won't, we won't push you because people have to watch it. Part of the that's the suspense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the games we play on Friday Night Movies. So we're going to play a couple of our Friday Night Movie games. So we talk about the MVP, the LVP, and the MIP. Sometimes we change the last one around, but it's the MVP, the most valuable performance performer it can be character also because we know you all did an amazing job performing the lvp is your least valuable player that would be the character you're rooting most against or maybe you just didn't like or or maybe there's a reason you know there's some sort of grudge you have against them but the mip this is where it gets really interesting which is which character throughout the film or throughout the experience with them do you to you improve of your in your in your opinion of them uh, and so I'll actually start with my sisters so you all can get ready and and but we're picking the characters here again all your performances are amazing so this is not a performance oriented thing Lily you're always very decisive and love a good baseless uh opinion <laughs> I feel like that's me <laughs> oh fair enough which well, one Lily well, likes I, to circle I mean, the air I my MVP is definitely <laughs> Sophie because right it's not Sophia right it's Sophie Sophia it's, it's Oh, Sophia. Sophia. Okay, oh. sorry, it's Sophia. Um, but they at some point they call you Sophie, right? Someone says Sophie. Or they, they call you yeah. Soph. Or Soph. Soph. They call you Soph. Right. Um, and obviously, I thought of Sophie's choice, and they literally say to you, uh, some at the one point, Sophie, you have to make a choice or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you did you not think of that? I didn't think of that at all. Oh, I, get yeah. out! But that's why I thought in the you Jew named of Malta. I thought that's why you named her Sophie, and then you just confirmed you think of the names for meaning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is that. Yeah, and, and there's and, a line, and, Sophie. You must make a choice. I so <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, that really, really no, hitting and, us and, with that and, Sophie's and, choice. And in Elizabeth Curtis, you were in the Jew of Malta, so maybe there was, you know, like some a deep connection, cultural <laughs> connection to our people. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but anyway, so you were my, well, or she was my MVP because I feel like she um, had an impossible task, kept it together the whole movie. I I like how she is, you know, on a mission and at the end is willing to sacrifice. What I don't fully understand is that if you were, your idea is that if you sacrifice yourself and Connor, this, I'm not going to say this is what happens, but your idea is that you're saving your brother at least. Right, your goal is to save your brother, or at least to just to end this horrible madness. 
um it's altruistic right your yeah. your so motivation what ha what's happened is happened so uh the people that need saving are saved <laughs> i'll say that got it okay <laughs> but i feel like your intentions are good at the very end yeah yeah so i i feel like you really keep it together in a quite difficult situation that's so that's my mvp my lvp is jeff i would like to not feel bad when he he was like i love you and i'm like you know what man you need to get it together you had a lots of chances and you seem to be real confused about what loyalty is so no problem um and it's i wouldn't i don't know if it's my most improved but i do think that connor's character has a lot of evolution in the movie and you know and if i could say I, I i wish i did get more terry um the therapist i do wish i i had a little bit more because i thought that was so those scenes were great and i i want more of that and i would watch like i i do get really scared in scary movies but i do want to see like the demon james story because i was really into that as well um and then obviously the sequel where molly comes back as like the bitchiest demon ever to attack everyone we have discussed this <laughs> yes. so i really did love everybody but i i appreciated that there's a lot of meat behind uh connor's character in the movie all right benjamin who is your mvp your LVP, your MIP. You can pick one too. You don't have to do all three. I want shot. Is this like? Are we are we speaking character specific or actors as well? Characters, whichever we, we will not I make mean, you pick which actors you like yes. the most in front of your colleagues. <laughs> it's, it's so strange. Um, mm, I'm gonna. Uh, I think MVP, and it's. I'm kind of leaning in all sorts of weird ways here, but um, let's go with. Uh, uh, Jacob Janiniwab. Uh, <laughs> that's a great last name. I'm, so I'm, great. I'm, I, I probably butchered the name too, like everybody. <laughs> but I think the thing uh, about why MVP on that is um, in every friend group, you need somebody to keep the levity up. And uh, definitely, whether that's for the structure of the script or um, Jason as an actual human being, uh, like that character is so very important. And uh, uh, we're in this like horrible, weird situation where this, you know, snarky person that kind of want to die a little bit uh, is necessary. So I think like very valuable in that, in that realm. Um, mm, I would cool. lean on that. What was the oh, other one? Okay. The, the middle one? Oh, it's yeah, your, LVP. You, LVP or MIP you don't, or your most improved. You don't have to do all of them. I, I'll actually want to go around so we have enough time to hit everybody. So you can just okay. pick one. All right, yeah. Elizabeth, I'm going to leave you for last because I feel like you'll get, you know, we'll learn a lot. Terry, which of the characters in this film was either your MVP, your least valuable player, or the one that improved the most over time? And Ooh. we're joined by Connor as well just now. Nice, Connor's wow. here. Paul, Paul hey, is here. Hey, hey, Paul. Oh, all right. Sorry for the delay. Oh, you, doing? Paul. you just there missed Lily. You just missed <laughs> Lily exposing how much she loved the, the layers of your character. So we'll come oh, back. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> no worries. But, but Terry, um, over to you for your, for your most or least or most improved. Most, of course, is Soph, because she carries the action through her motivation of saving her brother, and she ultimately does it. And Lydia, what's Lydia's character's name? I forget the em character. Emily, right? Emily? Emily. Uh, she deserved every bit of ugliness she got. <laughs> I love the whole charging her parents for rent thing. <laughs> yes, that was, was really I well done. <laughs> Lily, I could see you doing that. My I parents, mean, the whole quarantine, we uh, where I live, I live in Spain, and where I the live, Canary the, Islands, you're all the, invited. You're all invited to come to the Canary wow. Islands. Wow. Um, and so they got stuck here right like a week before the quarantine happened, and we had a full lockdown here. I think right, like like similar to Ireland, where you couldn't even go to the shops yep. like they say almost so, seven months right so we were really locked down and they stayed with me and i did not charge them rent to live with but me. they lived with <laughs> a record 13 months they 13 months <laughs> and i did not charge them rent so and how much time are they willing to spend with me less than 24 hours before they're going <laughs> back to visit you they were here for my house is very wait fun. so lily got 13 months shy got 24 hours i got a 20 minute visit on the morning they were leaving <laughs> 
<laughs> Becky and I live Just to be people. clear, I am the youngest, and this is, you know, this is the dynamic in our family. Be- Be- Becky and I live next door to each other in Virginia, so not near, not, not in the Canary Islands. Um, okay, uh, Paul, just to catch you up, we are asking people about their MVP or LVP, no. their least valuable char- player, but their characters. So no <laughs> comments the on your actors. I'm going to yes. go to Tina next, then back to you, Paul. Then we're going to okay. close out the no questions pressure. with Elizabeth because I feel like the writer is going to give us some real special insight there. Tina, which character were you either rooting, you know, or did you, was your most valuable or your least valuable or your... Uh, um, I'm going to start backwards. My most improved for me was, and more in the sense that like, I got to like this character more and more as time went on, was um, Jacob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's great. I got to appreciate him more and more as we went on. Um, least, uh, it would have to be Connor for obvious reasons. People just have to watch the movie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and most, I mean, Sophia, of course, I'm rooting for her from the beginning. So, you know. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> All right, Paul. Which character was your most valuable? Paul, Paul who plays Connor your most valuable player, your least valuable player, and which one do you think your opinion of them improved as the, as the film went on, as the story unfolds? Um, I, I'm, I'm quite fond of uh, uh, Mantis Pete Boggan. He's, he's somewhat of a, a father figure, the, the character that Terry <laughs> plays. You know, he, he kind of just like, as, as Terry only can do, he's, you know, very smooth and suave. He gives that, that sagely wisdom toward the the early end of the movie and then just vanishes into nothingness which is uh which is quite nice um i, I least lvp it's gonna be molly um you know, oh. <laughs> maybe maybe maybe, maybe 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 i'm staying in character somewhat you know i don't know she, she just, you know she comes on they're all self-righteous and, and arms of the teeth and <laughs> and you know wants to have a good old moan at all of us so um yeah those those would be my uh my two picks oh that's that's awesome all right elizabeth oh and also i can't i can't before we do this i i do have to 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 just send some love to professor peter vincent jr because he talks about kandarian demons which again as an evil dead <laughs> fan was just amazing yep <laughs> so your mvp your lvp and your most improved character so I first have to say one of the biggest takeaways I hope people get out of this film is um, when it comes to mistakes, you know, it, it really depends on what you do with those mistakes that make who you are as a person. So you can make really bad mistakes and then choose to fix them, or you can make really bad mistakes and just keep making bad mistakes. <laughs> and not grow and change as a human being. So in that respect, um, I mean, I am biased with Sophia because I I knew what I was doing there with trying to say like, you know, no matter what you make bad mistakes, but it's what you do with that bad mistake, you know, to either try and fix it or solve it that, you know, makes you who you are. Um, Of course, Terry is also one of my favorites because he does nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> you know, and he gives great advice. So, I mean, he, he would definitely be my favorite. Uh, really helps me out as a person. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then the people that don't change at all, uh, depending on what their choice is, is really who, what makes them, you know, the bad guy kind of in a way yeah. depending on how you look at it but yeah they they don't change so those people that don't make the change are the ones that i don't you know they're yeah. my they're my least favorite <laughs> one thing we talk about um one one thing we talk about on the show a lot is character growth being one of the main things that will make us yes. love a show so i really love that you punish the people who do, or or you're you're punishing in terms of who you like and you don't. The people that don't grow, you're like mm, not good. Okay, we're gonna play our next game. Okay, this is this is a game we were doing and was named by our friends, our friend Chris Royce, who who runs uh, along with um, uh, Steve, uh, Stevie, 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 
Last name. Oh my god. Stevie Stevie. St- Stevie Jackson. Uh, Stevie Jackson. I was gonna Jackson. say Stevie Jones, but I'm like, that's not right. No. But I was right. I was gonna reference play. Stevie Jackson, the Buddies Without Borders thinking, podcast. Right. I was thinking they of named the it Twitter handle. I have like a all these awesome people in front of me. I have like a brain freeze. This game, uh, the Comparathon was named by Chris Royce of the Buddies Without Borders podcast that he does with Stevie Jackson. The um this is called the Comparathon. And we're going to do it. Normally, we'd have one person on the hot seat. But this time, we're going to, everyone's going to take a choice. Everyone's going to, like, decide for the group what the next winner in the Comparathon is. So this is going to be really interesting. So what we'll do is we're going to, keeping with the theme of practical effects, because just love that element of this film, we're going to put a, a, a movie, famous for its practical effects, up, and then bring another one as 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 that you would compare it to and you have to pick one which one's better and then that one will go on to the next round so i'll start with i'll have lily start us off and we'll go to paul we'll kind of work our way around my screen the way i see it lily jaws versus oh, we get it we get to say something oh, I, I, I want you I, I, I'm, I'm having I, I just wanted you to Pretty demonstrate generous of you okay demonstrate. you're asking me All demonstrate right. jaws versus alien 1979, the original. It's difficult because I couldn't go into a bathtub after I saw Jaws. But it's not like you go to space. Scared. But right. Yeah. I, but I was so scared. I remember being way too little to watch that movie in a pool. I would like have a like palpitations. And it was difficult for me to fill up the bathtub as a kid because I was like, there's a chance. There's a small chance that a shark could swim through. I think you're confusing the Jaws and Sharknado. <laughs> No, no, no. I was so scared of Jaws. However, I had the privilege of having an older brother who showed me Alien way too young. So then I didn't own, I didn't need to be afraid of Jaws because now I was afraid of the alien. So definitely Alien trumps Jaws. Okay, excellent. That is the right, that's the right answer there. That's Alien's one of my favorite. There like, is no movies. right answer, okay, everyone. Fine, fine. There's no right answer. All right. There is no right answer. All right, so Paul, this is an interesting one. All right. Yep. Alien. 1979 classic from Ridley Scott Mm -hmm. and the dark crystal, the Jim Henson, you know, masterpiece. Oh, this is creature versus uh, creature here. I'm like, I'm a big fan of puppetry. And yeah, when it comes to that, there's, there's few who hold a candle to Jim Henson. Um, Though. I mean, right. We take into account that the alien was a, you know, close to seven feet tall Nigerian students studying in England at the time. The <laughs> I love the, the knowledge depth in this panel oh, of speakers. Of so and amazing. <laughs> but, I love it that you all know this. Yeah, story. yeah, so yeah. Um, for me personally, there's something like when you mentioned the first two movies, and I'll, I'll make this brief. When you mentioned the first two movies, both of them are experts at the slow burn in terms right, of a exactly. Uh, Exactly. And that's what makes them so captivating. And I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say alien for me because it re- it relies it it shows how much can be done with so little. Not to not to say that HR Giger's production design is not astounding. It is, but right, it's right, it's right. it's shadows, it's darkness, it's you know, the it's tea, letting just you the, just the, get the, out. Yeah. yeah. Just the tip, just the tip of the iceberg, yeah, and and just little elements as you go along. So in that sense, for me, that that not that dark dark crystal is, but (laughs) Alien would be my choice. Alien would be my choice. All right, Terry, we're gonna we're gonna take you to another another film that I think relied on the talent. I know relied on the talents of Jim Henson's crew, but it's not in some other um, uh, creators. Alien. This is going to be a space versus space battle versus Return of the Jedi. And I specifically say Return of the Jedi because if we're talking practical effects, this does include the five people stuffed inside of Jabba the Hutt's body situation here. So, Terry, Return of the Jedi versus Alien. Well, Alien is a discovery horror movie, just as you know, like Jaws, you know who the bad guy is when the young woman gets sucked down you, 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 in the beginning of the movie. Right, but right. in Alien, you don't know what's happening. You have to discover what's happening, and there are two different kinds of horror. Now, Star Wars <laughs> is a comic book 
characters uh, that deal with future kinds of essences uh, in their, their mental ca capacity uh, using the force. And, uh, and uh, we don't need to see his identification and, uh, you, you know, that <laughs> Jedi. Uh, I think activity. Terry needs to be cast, by the way, in the Mandoverse as a Jedi. Can we agree <laughs> on that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But yeah, uh, it's just the formats are so different and the, the movies are capture essence in a whole different kind of way. So I still would go with Alien because it is, uh, wow, it is just a stunning exercise. And oh, this is why we're dying. And he is ugly. So <laughs> uh, that's it for the Alien again. All right, all right. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to jump around on, I don't know who can see the the list you do um, you do what you need to do i'm gonna jump around okay because i i want to make this extra challenging now for elizabeth okay alien and then you name checked it earlier so evil dead 2 <laughs> are we talking about just the practical effects or the you can the look i set rules and you can break them that is how all these that's games how work. that's how lily just plays. i play just just lily plays. Your so you're a part of the family we are now so you get to all right. Well, Just ignore shy. What we usually do. <laughs> this is hard. Um, Evil Dead Two played with claymation, lots of blood, <laughs> lots and lots of blood, um, and we all know how much I like that. <laughs> and you so, literally have a blood company. Yeah, for movies, for movie, movie blood <laughs> company. That is true. Clear. Wait, mention the blood company. <laughs> Typo. <laughs> Typo. Typo. <laughs> Comes we'll out. We'll have the links to the blood company in the in show a, notes for for typo in the show notes for all the filmmakers who are looking to buy blood that listen yeah. to the show that does not stain the skin it does not or is amazing. for that matter comes That's off of everything amazing uh, all right we've allowed to be you to clear stall. it's not ketchup right it's not ketchup okay just, we, we've allowed you to stall to confirm that alien <laughs> versus evil dead 2 oh, the, the alien is pretty much one of my favorite movies uh, in terms of character development. Every single uh, character, you know exactly what they're about, like right from the get-go. Um, and I know that has nothing to do with the practical effects, but for me, that makes it even more terrifying to see some sort of uh, creature attacking them. So that element definitely, um, you know, adds an element to my answer. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right, Ben. So, all right. Yeah. I like. Okay. So, alien. Okay, Benjamin, you're gonna go last because of that. I'm gonna give you a few different options. You can. So you. No, like, not last. Like, Tina wait. didn't go. Oh, Tina. I'm sorry, Tina. You gotta go. Tina gets last. Sorry, so, Tina. Benjamin is gonna go. Wait. No. Benj. Who should go last? Tina or Benjamin? What do you think, Lil? Not me. Okay, so, Tina, fine. So I, think, Benjamin. I think Benjamin should go last. That was okay, going to be Benjamin, my you are anyway. going to go last. And because okay. you're going to go last, we're going to throw Since a Since he could be on this list as one of the scary yeah, As one of the scary characters. I thought his effects. part was the scariest part of the movie. All right. Yeah. So. Okay, so Tina. Alien versus... I'm trying to channel where I think Tina... What, like, what would be most... Okay. Tina, uh, Alien versus... Um, this is an adventure movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, so Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones, particularly that final scene. Of a melting face. Oh, that oh stayed God, with me for so a long time. This um, <laughs> alien, because <laughs> it's the one I've seen. <laughs> as long as you've seen Alien. There. We're in good you do shape. recommend Indiana Jones, though, if you're looking for a fun yeah, adventure Raiders movie. Of the Lost Ark is <laughs> We're, that's pretty we I, I i got my kids to watch it and they're really too young for it <laughs> okay benjamin you're gonna i didn't get, want to go last uh, okay benjamin you're gonna you're <laughs> gonna get a couple because i'm gonna make it extra hard for you so you, you have to so the, you have three against alien now because alien also has been like crushing here okay okay so some iconic practical effects here alien versus american werewolf in london the invention of the werewolf's transformation okay Alien versus The Fly, 
you know, Cronenberg oh, at his best. Still Our, makes me want to vomit. Oh. So and, and then he eats, gets his food. Uh, and, and then <laughs> Alien versus versus Carpenter, the thing. You know, also just kidding. Now I want to vomit thinking about the thing. <laughs> So you can pick any one of those to put Alien up against, or you can say Alien just beats all of those. It's up to you. Oh, you've done me a horrible disservice here. Um, I uh, am obsessed with body horror, and uh, oh, it's body horror it. versus versus a uh, versus Alien. Jeez, um, Alien's also super influential to me because it's possibly the first horror film I ever saw. Um, I, I saw a double feature of Alien and Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and those movies uh, <laughs> really have a lot of effect on me. Um, also, like the character of uh, Ripley uh, is just like an incredible like icon. Uh, Scorny Weaver is Bay. Um, Jeff Goldblum in the fly, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Like I I certainly looked at Jeff Goldblum's performance in that for James. Um, I this oh, kind wow. of like how are you like manipulating your form and shifting and um what are the effects of of uh monsters on the body? Um God. I mean you had to put three against one because alien is perfect. Right. Yeah. Basically. I, mean, yes, basically. I didn't realize that's where we were going, but I do believe I, I often will talk about that movie as a perfect movie. So it's if, if, if you want to go with Alien, it's going to be fine with me. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I love all of them. I can't I can't say that. But like we, Alien is perfect. So, yes, we, we never want to make it easy. All right. We've got a couple minutes left to go. We are with the cast of The Dark Offerings, which is on Amazon. And people should buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. We actually this is a buy. The rating system on the Friday Night Movie Podcast is buy, rent, or meh. And everyone should go and buy this. So go check it out, Dark Offerings. We've been with Elizabeth Piper, the writer of the film, Benjamin Frankenberg, Tina Nikolova, Paul Sheehan, and Terry Alexander. Um, Before we go, we, we have so little time. I would love if you could each in 15 seconds or less say where we could follow you and one recommendation, one pop culture recommendation for the audience, something you're either watching. Or what you're, or, or maybe what you're working on. Or what on you're working there, on. That's or what's tricky. coming up or, or we what's can see up. you. Or... So Info you Elizabeth, as the, as the captain of the ship, we'll start with you. Um, uh, where can people follow you and one recommendation? Okay. Uh, Instagram, Elizabeth Piper S, um, on Twitter, Elizabeth Piper E, or, uh, you can try and catch me on Facebook. I think I have a, uh, TikTok. Um, what was the other thing? <laughs> well, one recommendation. A recommendation. I mean, is the dark or what's offerings your, work? your recommendation or maybe you have um, another one? Yeah, I, I would recommend the dark offerings oh. <laughs> and all these lovely people in action. Definitely. All right, Tina, where can people follow you and a recommendation? Uh, on Instagram at the really real Tina uh, and recommendation. This movie is in theaters now. Uh, it's called The Worst Person in the World. If you haven't seen it, it's awesome. Very cool. Okay. Ooh. Terry. Hey, dark offerings, baby. That's what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. That's no, awesome. you can Facebook me or Instagram me. Uh, <laughs> there's something that I can't talk about, can't talk about right now, that give it away. So, but there's something coming down by you're gonna really love it. Oh wow. Well, we will be there to cheer you on, maybe even talk to you again if you if, if, if you Sounds like cool. being part of the family. Um yeah. we but uh thank you. Uh all right, so we'll be looking, we'll be keeping an eye on on what's coming. Paul. Where can people follow you and a recommendation? I'm I'm a bit of a social media bore. Uh, I'm on Instagram, so I'm suppose I'm somewhat okay. Uh, you can find me there at Paul P Sheehan. Uh, recommendation: I jumped back into Climax the other day. One of my favorite movies, Gaspar Noé. Uh, fantastic film. If you haven't checked it, it's a real thrill ride. And keep your eyes peeled for Scaredy Cat. It's a series mm. that I am going to be pitching to some people soon. Uh, it's kind of rooted in Irish language, folklore, and horror. That's, so that's awesome. That is awesome. That sounds, like that. That that sounds like that. awesome. So that's what's going on. All right, Benjamin. 
Um, I am on Twitter probably most uh, as a human being. That's uh, Ben Horrible at Twitter. Um, I also <laughs> am on a podcast uh, called The Cultured Curators um, with oh, my cool. co-host uh, Robbie Satabi. We talk pop culture, you know, weird stuff. Um, uh, recommendation that I would say, uh, Titan, uh, the uh, newest French extremity uh, film that came out, won the Con Pondor this year. Um, Julia Ducanau's follow up to Raw. Uh, it's incredible. It didn't get, I don't think it got any Oscar nods or anything like that, but it's absolutely uh, an important film for people to see. Um, people call it the car fucker film, but it's really good. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Becky, where can people follow you and one wreck that you've got? At Paper BK Princess um, on Twitter. And I am loving Severance on Apple TV. It's that's my jam. That's my algorithm. So I'm loving and, it. And Lily? You can follow me on Twitter. Chi Chi C H I C H I K Gomez is my Twitter handle. And it's embarrassing, but Shine chose it for me a long time ago and now I'm stuck with it. So Chi Chi K Gomez. And I um I mean it's not embarrassing. Your middle name is Chi Chi. So it's not my middle name, <laughs> but uh, now I have to explain when I was little, our mom is Cuban and um, my brother and sister got middle names. I did not get a middle name and I felt left out. And I guess it was that Latin influence. And I decided that that would be the appropriate middle name for them to call me. And they have and not let me forget it. And Becky has forced her that? children to call me basically aunt Chi Chi because they are Tia Chi Chi as we say in our family in Spanish and yes they think that that's my name now so the joke that will never end um and I were I'm watching inventing Wait, and Anna. Gomez is your husband's uh, last name and Gomez is yeah K is for Corman and Gomez is my husband's last name and I am watching inventing Anna on Netflix which is the great Julia Garner is amazing and I had read that article when it came out years ago so I am super fascinated by the story. And I also have to remember, this came from a guest that we had um, a few weeks ago. I He recommended the documentary, The Rescue, uh, from the team that made Free Solo. And it's on, you can get on Disney Plus. And it is about the rescue efforts of the, the, the team, the Thai uh, soccer team of the little boys, the teenage boys that were stuck in the cave. And it is... It is phenomenal. I, I, as much as you think you know about that story, it is that is a it was a, an incredible film and an incredible story of like countries working together, perseverance, and ten guys in the world that had like a random, very obscure hobby are the only people that could solve this problem, and it was wild. So I recommend that. Very cool. And you can follow me at Pancake and the Number Four Table on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and uh, my recommendation is a short that Lily and a Allie, my wife, and I got to watch called Radical Honesty that is premiering at South by Southwest on March 12th. We got a preview of it because brrr, news, actually, you'll probably have heard this by, you may have heard this by now already from us, but Friday Night Movie will be at the South by Southwest Wonder House presented by, hosted by the University of Arizona March 11th through 13th, we'll post the schedule of when we're recording episodes and we're gonna be doing interactive stuff and giving stuff away. So please check us, please come and hang out with us there. But we got to see Radical Honesty, which is a great short about sex in modern times from Alison Goldfarb, the writer and actor, and Bianca Paletti, the director. They did a magnificent job with it and uh, definitely check out our special South by Southwest preview episode that has that on there. All of the Friday Night Movie shenanigans are at Friday Night Movie on Twitter and Instagram or FridayNightMoviePod.com. The theme music is by What Does It Eat? A huge thank you to our amazing guests from The Dark Offerings. Thank you so you much for your all you. Friday Night so Movie family. Fun. And we will be rooting for you all the time. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care.